If you struggle with discouragement, despair, if you want to die, if you have suicidal thoughts, here's what you have thought at some point, that you are unspiritual, that you are ungodly, and God doesn't want anything to do with you. And yet what you will find is that David, that, that, that none of those things could actually interrupt you from being a man after God's own heart, a woman after God's own heart. In fact, let's hear from some of the other most godliest men in the Bible. Moses says this in Numbers chapter 11, verse 15. Moses was so frustrated that he could not meet the people's demands that he said, God, would you kill me now? Job chapter 6, verse 11, Job said that I just can't take it anymore. I have no hope and I give up. Elijah, for for this very reason, is my favorite Bible character in the entire Bible because here you have one of the mightiest prophets of the Lord who has just slain 450 prophets of Asherah and Baal, right? I mean, and what is he doing immediately after that? Is he shaking like champagne corks and popping them with goggles over his eyes? You know, is he working out the sequel of his story out with DreamWorks? No. Where do we find Elijah? Sitting underneath a tree asking God to kill him. Okay, so all I want to say is this, that if you struggle with depression and if you struggle with suicidal thoughts today, who would have ever thought that you actually find yourself in the company of some of the godliest men and women in the Bible? Let me, let, me give you a, let me give you a story about another very godly man. There's a famous pastor named Tommy Nelson who leads a church called Denton Bible Church. He said, let me tell you something. If you ever have to face clinical depression or some kind of mental illness, here's what he said. Are you ready? This is a message for you and it's a message for me. Be careful who you tell. Especially if you're telling an evangelical Christian. Because here's what's going to happen. Oftentimes Christians will moralize you and they will scorn treatment. They'll say that you're far from God, that you just need to read your Bible and that you need to just have a better relationship with God. Let me tell you a little bit about my own struggles. When we first started this church, um, you know, there was a a lot of pressure. We had the opportunity of a mother church that was doubling down. We, we had a senior pastor who had cashed in every leadership chip that he had with this church in order to start this church. And guess who he doubled down on? He doubled down on me. I don't know what he was thinking, but I felt a lot of pressure not only from that, but, you know, like, Starting a church is a lot of hard work. So here's the thing. We started this church in the first year. Everything went perfect. I mean, could not have gone any better. We doubled in size in the first year from about 200 people to 400 people. I mean, everything was going amazing. And so at the end of that year, I had a friend come out to do a strategic planning session with, uh, with our staff, and we were talking about how it is that we were going to move forward into the future, and the future was bright, and everything was going to be awesome. But then after we had finished that entire day of planning, um, he excused the staff, and he wanted to talk individually with me. And he said, Mark, I know how the church is doing, and I know how uh, the staff is doing, but I want to know how you're doing. And all of a sudden, I just like broke down in tears because I had realized in that moment just how overworked and how alone I felt in the entire process. Uh, We had almost no staff. It was me full time. I was the one who was going through the connection cards. I was the one who was calling every first time visitor. I was the outreach program. I was the small groups program, you know, it was me and it was Tom half time and Tom was working as a full-time sheriff's deputy at the time. And so I realized that unless I changed my schedule that ministry would get the best of me. And so I realized that if I was going to finish this race that I couldn't do it alone. I told you this last week that, you know, like um, the only reason why I've been able to persist the past 10 years in this ministry is not because I'm a godly man. It's not because uh, uh, I read my Bible every morning, which I do. It's because I've had a whole host of people, like my board, my elders, you know, my staff, people around me 
I have a couple people like the Dave Holbrooks of the world who uh, care more about me than they do about the church. You've got to, because let me tell you, not only do you have, not only do you need other people in your life, but let me tell you this. Do you, do you know what the most um, frequently uh, stated promise in scripture is? The most frequently stated promise in scripture are these words right here, that I am with you. And that not only do you need other people to come around you, but you need those other people to help you come to understand that you have a God that is always with you, that you have a father. In fact, Jesus, one of his other names is Emmanuel, which literally means God with us. One of the titles of the Holy Spirit is the paraclete, which means that God comes alongside of us, that that's what God wants to do for you. He wants to come alongside you and he wants to help you every step of the way. And maybe it is incumbent upon you today to take his hand and say yes to a relationship with Jesus, to say yes to a heavenly father who loves you and wants to give you the strength in order to overcome and to help cross that finish line. But you've got to be able to say yes to him and you've got to be able to say yes to him today. And maybe that's you to be able to say yes to him for the first time just today or to say yes to him maybe to the millionth time in your life. And before we just go ahead and close out in prayer, here's what I want to say, that if you struggle with depression, that if you struggle with suicidal thoughts, and today, if you even have a plan to do it, here's what I want to let you know, that you will not be judged here. That we love you and that we want to help you. But here's the thing. We can't help you if we don't know. We can't help you if we don't know. 